I am Kara Lewis Newton. I'm a black status exclusive presenter with Unique. If you want to know more about me or you'd like to contact me, you can um, find my info in the bio. If you want to share this Periscope, you can swipe to the right or swipe down and share it with your followers, share it on Facebook, share it on Twitter, wherever you're on. This is my From White to Black and Everything in Between series. So I have been with my company now for 18 months. I started out as a white status presenter, which is our bottom level uh, starting out point of the company. And I have now risen to black status, which is the top level of the company. And so what I want to talk about is how I went from white to black, all of that in between. So this is part two in our six-part series. Um, last time we talked about um, the launch party and how to start strong. And after your launch party, the next thing you're looking for is some hostesses to help you get some more parties booked to expand your network, right? Okay, so let me... Um, start back to you know how I started um, I had I told you I had a, a pretty strong launch okay um, but I think when people hear my numbers oh let me stop one second thank you Emily um, my team is team flourish and these trainings are for team flourish but I open them up to the entire company so if you're on here and you are with team flourish hashtag team flourish because I love to see my girls on here it makes me feel more comfortable <laughs> okay so, um, so I started out with a, you know, a pretty strong launch. I hit yellow in my launch party. Um, but I think when people hear my numbers, when they hear my party averages, um, when they hear my PRS, they assume that I must have had like 30 hostesses come out of my launch party. And um, that's really not what happened. So I had my launch party and I had two hostesses come from my launch party. Okay, so um, I'm no different than any of you. All right, um, I had two ladies agree. I had it, and it they weren't even good friends of mine. Um, the first one was a friend of my cousin, and then the other one was an old friend from elementary school that I hadn't talked to in like 20 years. Okay, so those were my two hostesses that came from my launch party, and then obviously from those parties, I got more parties, but I also did a few other things to gain hostesses. Okay. So one of the first things that I did when um, I was looking for hostesses was I went through my friends list on Facebook, okay, and I just started writing names down, all right? I started writing names um, of people that, um, that had more than a thousand friends, okay, because I figured if they have a thousand friends on Facebook, they... They have a pretty large network, and I need their network, okay? So I wrote down my friends that had over a thousand friends. And then I messaged them and just said, hey, you have a lot of friends on Facebook. <laughs> People like you. Uh, is there any way you would be willing to host an online party with me if I send you, and at the time, I sent them a mascara. Now, I think you could send them any product, and they would do it. Now, listen to me. I used my rewards from my launch party to purchase the product to send to these people. Okay? And I'm not telling you you need to spend hundreds of dollars, but I do think that you need to invest some money back into your business so that you can expand your business. And that's what I did. I bought five mascaras and I handed them out strategically to people. I didn't just hand it to my neighbor because she'd say yes. Okay, I strategically picked the people I wanted and I made it sound like an honor to do this party with me. Okay, so I also not only went through and wrote down the people that had over a thousand names, but I went through and I started writing down names of influential people on my friend list. Okay, and you'll notice that I'm not looking at these people and um, looking at them as, as presenters. I'm not contacting them as being presenters. Okay, because at this point in the game, you need some parties. Okay, so don't worry about getting those presenters yet. Okay, that will come if you're early on in the game and you don't have hostesses. That's your main priority, okay? I know that that may be different than some of the other leaders, and that's totally fine because we all do it differently, and that's fabulous. Um, but I think to really grow and expand your network, okay, because that's what's going to grow your business at first, you've got to start looking for hostesses, okay? So I wrote down influential people. Now, what is an influential person? Um, well, they were the girls that in high school everyone wanted to be around. Typically, if they're influential in high school and college, they continue to be influential in life. Not always. Sometimes people become influential. But typically, they continue to be influential. So if they were like a class president 
and I was friends with him and I'm Facebook friends. I messaged that girl. Uh, girls in college that everyone just liked being around, that they had a lot of friends, that they were fun. Message them. Um, you know who else is awesome to message who's influential? People with influential families, influential parents, okay? Because their parents have very large networks. I'm going to tell you about that one in a minute, okay? So, um, so I, I messaged people with over a thousand friends and people that were just influential, that people, other people looked up to, other people listened to, um, that when they posted on Facebook, they got a ton of likes, a ton of comments. They posted a lot of themselves, of their kids, and people interacted a lot. So I just really studied my Facebook feed and I wrote down those names, okay? Um, and I messaged them and I just said, hey, here's what I'm doing. I love these products. And you want to compliment them. You want to tell them that you see them as an influential person. I mean, to me, there's not, there's no greater compliment than for someone to say, you inspire me. You're influential. People look up to you. Okay. And be genuine about it. Find those people that you feel that way about and message them. That is a huge compliment. And I guarantee you, they're going to want to help you out when you compliment them in that way. Okay. Um, I messaged uh, one of my really big, huge parties was a local blogger, okay? So I didn't spend time on these national big bloggers, okay? No, I found a blogger that was local to my county that was doing reviews on the businesses around Indianapolis, the restaurants around Indianapolis. It wasn't even beauty. But I realized she's got to have a big following if she's a blogger and she's doing these reviews, right? So I messaged her and I asked her, guess what? She had an amazing party. That party was... Um, September after I joined, I did uh, almost $12,000 that month, and her party really propelled my business. So all it takes is one, okay? All it takes is one. I want to say that I got between 12 and 15 hostesses from one party, okay? Um, and you never know who that's going to be. I knew it was going to be a good party. I had no idea it was going to be that good, okay? All right, so those are the things, those are a few of the things that I did. Okay, to expand my network to get hostesses in. I invested a little bit in the product to give away. I strategically gave it away. I didn't just give it away to anybody that was willing to host a party. We're going to talk about that in a second. Okay? All right. So once I got some parties, how did I keep the momentum going? How do I still keep the momentum going? Okay, I averaged 25 online parties a month. How do I keep that momentum going? A couple of things. One, okay, um, I realized very early on, because I tried the whole, uh, if I give you a lip gloss, will you host a party? Uh, guess what? Yes, people will. And guess what? Those people that respond to that usually do not have the most successful parties, okay? The ladies that jump all over the freebies quite often are not the ones that have the best parties. And you've probably found that to be true for yourself. Every once in a while you'll get one. But for the most part, I found that that wasn't true. I also found that when I was uh, running parties for a hostess that I did not know and I offered a freebie to her friends, they don't trust me enough to trust that there's no catch. Okay? So here's what I learned. Women are much more likely to do something for their friend than they are to take something for themselves. So in my parties, I've begun offering the hostess a gift if three of her friends book a party with me. I'll tell you what, it totally changed. My momentum took off. Now I don't always get three hostesses, and then I don't have to give a gift. Sometimes I get one, sometimes I get two. But if three book a party for me, that is completely worth me giving her a mascara or whatever, a lip stain or a bronzer, okay? Totally worth it if I can get three parties from it. Um, and they're much more willing to help their friend out than they are if I say, hey, I'll give you a free lipstick, okay? And I've now gotten my hostess to work for me because I tell her up front in the beginning, if three of your friends host a party, I'm going to just give you a gift, $30 value, I'm giving you a gift. So think of who you think would be good at this and ask them to do it so that you can get this gift, okay? So that has worked beautifully for me. All right, um, so let's talk about um, the influential people again, okay? I was a good pick, all right? So my sponsor was one of my best friends, and um, she hadn't been in the business long enough to really think through all of these things about who should I ask, what should I do. I just saw that she was posting. I asked her, what are you doing? Because, I mean, we talked almost every day, and she said, you should totally host a party. Uh, you know so many people. And then she's like, actually, you need makeup. Why don't you just buy the kit? So I did that, okay? But why was I a good pick? Why was I a good pick? Well, let me tell you. I have a knowledge of social media. That was obvious. If you looked through my Facebook, you would see that I posted probably four to five times a week, if not more. I wasn't afraid to post pictures of myself. 
I wasn't afraid to make fun of myself on Facebook. Okay, so I was very comfortable. It didn't scare me to be on social media. That's huge. Okay, find the girls that aren't afraid to make fun of themselves. Okay, that's a big one. All right, find the girls that are already posting pictures of themselves. They don't have to be selfies, but pictures of them with their kids, pictures of them with their husband. Okay, and um, that they're getting a lot of in interaction on. Okay, so that's one reason I was a good pick. Another reason, the second reason I was a good pick, I have a large network. Um, now, Large in the sense, I should say, I had an expansive network. I didn't have a ton of friends. I think when I started Unique, I had around 400 Facebook friends. However, what my sponsor did know about me, which is why she said I should do a party, was because I had lived in several states. So I grew up in New Jersey. I moved to Indiana. I went to school in Kentucky. I lived in Fort Lauderdale for five years. I spent three summers in North Carolina, okay? And then I moved back to Indy right? So she knew I had been all over the place, which meant I had people all over the place. It didn't mean I had a lot of people, but I had people in different places. So that is a huge indicator of someone that would be a great pick, okay? The third reason, and probably as I sit and think about it, one of the most uh, beneficial reasons in why I was a good pick, I have an influential family, okay? So, um, Everyone in my family was a pastor. My grandfather, my uncles, my dad, um, and uh, they all lived in different parts of the country. Um, they themselves have, a, have a, just a lot of people that look up to them, okay? I'm the oldest grandchild in my family, okay? That's another indicator, right? I'm the oldest, which means um, a lot of my grandparents' people know me. Okay, so that's a huge indicator. Look through your list and think, okay, who has a family that's really influential, okay? And so that meant that I had people that were loyal to me, okay? I have people that were loyal to me, not because of me, but because of my parents and because of my grandparents and because of my aunts and uncles, okay? That doesn't mean I used them in any way. I didn't use my position of influence over them. What it was, was I already had a lot of loyal people in my life, okay? So those are the kind of people you want to look for, okay? Now, does that mean that, that people that don't have these things can't be successful? Absolutely not. I have seen girls on my team rise, 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 and they don't have these characteristics. But when you're giving product away and when you're really wanting to start your business out strong, these are the type of people you want to look for, okay? All right. Um, so like I said before, you want to go after the hostess and then present the presenter option, okay? So a lot of the uh, hostesses that I had early on eventually became presenters. Um, that big, big one that I had last September, she ended up joining a year later. Um, another huge one that I had at the beginning uh, was my friend who, you know, just was really into fashion. Everybody looked to her for fashion advice. She had a fabulous party for me eight months later, join my team. Um, I'm thankful I did it that way because it's what propelled my business and then they eventually came back to me and it wasn't me hounding them, okay? They got a ton of free product and then they came back and joined my team, okay? Um, another really great way, if you're stuck and you need a hostess, do a fundraiser. And I have a training on YouTube on fundraisers on how I do fundraisers. Uh, there's someone at the door. That was not what I wanted. Okay, hold on one second. Yep, on that side. Thank you. Oh, sorry. We have a siding issue outside. Okay, where was it? Fundraisers. So, um, I have done fundraisers and that expands your network and it gives you a party and I get more hostesses from those fundraisers and if you go watch that training you can read how I, or you can listen to how I do that okay um another way that I continue the momentum continue to get hostesses okay is I follow up with every purchase okay if and we're gonna one of the parts in this series is follow up and how I do my follow up but I follow up with every single purchase. And I will tell you, and Team Flourish will tell you, there is nothing that gets under my skin more than when I hear a girl say that she has not followed up or that she slacked in follow up or that it's been a month since she's followed up. Not okay. It's ethically, in my opinion, it's not okay. 
okay? Um, they have purchased from you. It is your job to make sure that that product is working for them, okay? They took the time to get out of their warm bed, to go into their purse, to get their credit card out, to come back over and purchase from you because you somehow found a way to get them to trust you enough to do that. It is your obligation as the presenter to make sure that you follow up with them, okay? Now, if I, as someone who does not run Google Ads, okay, who does not sponsor a post on Facebook, which means every purchase that comes through me is someone that has connected with me personally. If I can follow up with the $15,000 worth of orders in November, okay, that's what I had, that's what my PRS was. If I can follow up with every single one of those orders, you can too, okay? You can too. I promise you, it's really not as time consuming as you think, and we're going to talk about that. But every time I have someone respond with, I love it, it's fabulous, you better believe I give them the opportunity to host a party with me, okay? Mm -hmm. So I get a lot of my hostesses that way. Um, another great way of doing it is when you see that they're online, that little green light, um, and you're in the evening on Facebook, message them right then. Say, hey, I see you're online. Right then. Um, because you know they're, they're going to get your message, okay? So, bottom line. So, Team Flourish is, they are a team of freaking rock stars. And let me tell you, last night we did a little event together. One hour. One hour, our team focused on booking parties. Do you know how many parties we booked in one hour? We booked over 200 parties as a team in over one, in less than one hour. That is amazing. That is not because of me. That's not because of any great idea. You know what it is? It's women being willing to do one thing, and that's ask. Ask. You cannot throw up a graphic on your Facebook wall saying, who wants free makeup? Ask me how. Nobody's going to ask you, okay? You cannot post even a picture of yourself on Facebook with makeup and say, host a party with me. They're not going to. Okay? The only way that you're going to get hostesses is if you ask. You have to get over it. Our team motto is do it scared. And you better believe that all of the women that participated last night in that one hour booking frenzy did it scared. I did it scared. I've been doing this for 18 months and I did exactly what I told my girls to do, which was to ask. And I booked four parties last night, five on the way. Okay? Um, there are still people on my friends list that have not had a party with me and that I have not asked. Um, it was so eye-opening to me. So do it. Do it with one of your friends. Do it with your pacing partner. Say, okay, tonight from 9 to 10, we're going to book parties. We're going to do it together and we're going to do it scared. And we're going to ask. We're going to ask. We're done with posting little graphics on our Facebook wall and in our parties saying, have a party with me. Because that is not personal. That does not engage people. It does not promote trust. Okay? You have to ask have to ask. It's the only way. So if you're not asking, you will not get parties. Okay? So I hear a lot of ladies say, parties aren't my thing. I just don't do parties. That's totally fine. If you have found a way to make this business work for you, then that is amazing. However, if party, if you've decided parties aren't your thing, but you haven't found another way of doing this, my guess is you haven't asked. You have to ask. You have to make it personal. You have to put yourself out there. You have to do it scared. Okay? So that is my training on how to get a hostess and what has worked for me, what has worked for a lot of girls on my team. What are your questions? I'm ready. I am from South Jersey, Salem County near Delaware. It's, my fundraiser training is on YouTube. Uh, did I already have a party script? I had somewhat of a party script. My party script has developed over time. Um, but yes, I had a plan. A plan is very important. We're going to talk about that when we talk about parties. Okay. We haven't gotten to the parties yet. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Uh, what do I say when I am? Just be honest. Say, Hey, you know, if it's, if you're messaging the influential people, I find you to be influential. You inspire me. I look up to you and I know a lot of other people do too. If I sent you some products, would you be willing to do, you know, a, an online beauty party with me? Um, Oh, yeah, I do series in my customer group all the time. Do I plan that? No, I 
<laughs> I'm a little scattered with my hostess. I do have a planner now where I write down when I'm going to start their party, but I literally will take a hostess whenever she is ready to do a party. So if she is ready right now, we're starting it now because I don't want to lose them. Um, do the series coordinate with my parties? No. No, they're totally separate. When they don't have time, I got that yesterday. I said, I totally get that. I'm so busy too. I've got three kids and I work this job full time. Let me tell you, it only takes five minutes to add your friends. And then you reap the rewards of the free makeup if your party qualifies. And sometimes they agree and sometimes they don't. Because in my parties, I don't require engagement from their friends. And all I require for my hostesses is that she comments and posts occasionally. Um, I don't send anything to unqualified parties. A lot of that is based on the amount of parties I have. Um, I just can't keep up with that. Um, you know what? I thought I had run out of people to ask. And then last night when I looked through my friends list, guess what? I still have people to ask. <laughs> Do a fundraiser. Um, go back to your customers. Go back in that customer base group of yours. Um, how often do I switch, switch my script whenever we come out with new products? Uh, sometimes I send a personal voice message. It just depends. If I'm driving, I do. Um, the way I run my parties is I say, uh, you can now add your girlfriends. Um, add as many as you like. That's totally your call. That's up to you. This is her thing, not mine. Okay, so if she she can add or invite her friends however she wants. I'm not going to put parameters around that, okay? What I'm confident in is my party script. I'm confident that my party script, no matter what, is going to draw them in. Um, and so you have to be confident in that. You have to be proud of it. And we're going to talk about, you know, having a party script that you're proud of. But my, um, what I am putting all of my stock in is that that welcome video that I post is going to, those people that don't know, that don't even know that they want to be there, which is why I do groups, um, pulls them in. And I can't tell you how many customers I've gotten that way. Uh, how do I track who I've asked? Well, in your messages, you can see. <laughs> you can see if you've asked them before. So like last night when I was going through and I clicked their name, I could see, oh, I asked her three months ago, so I won't ask her right now. Yep, I ask people that haven't tried Unique. I will, I will take any party that anyone will let me throw with them because it opens my network up and you have no idea what you will get from that party. I told you I have done well over 400 parties by now and um, half of them have not qualified. Uh, but none of them go to waste. None of them. We're going to talk about the parties in the next training, okay? This is just about hostesses right now. But I appreciate your excitement. <laughs> but I just don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, okay? Um, if they say no, absolutely, I don't want to do that. It's not my thing. I can totally accept that. That is fine. If they say not now, then I write their name down and I come back to them in about three months. Um, if they don't answer, I let it be. I let it be because that's what I would do, <laughs> honestly. Um, when people have messaged me before Unique about doing a party, I just ignore them. That's what, I, that's what most people do. Um, I just let it go. Let it go. What other questions do you have? Just a couple more minutes. I'll take a few more. How do I ask the girls who I haven't spoken to in forever? I just say, hey, it's been a while. I've been following you on Facebook. I love seeing the pictures of your kids, or I love seeing the pictures of whatever. And then I say, I'm booking my parties this month. I thought of you. I saw that you're online. Would you want to do one with me? What do you think? I always end with a question. No, I don't give anything to my hostess when it doesn't qualify. Do I? Yes. Have you listened to this entire training? Because I talk about exactly um, how I ask for hostesses in parties. So go back and listen to the training. Uh, yeah, I'm, like I said, the online party is hers. It's the hostess. So if she wants to message her guests, great. I'm going to encourage her to do that when I send her my hostess train coaching video. Um, I'm, you know, I'm going to encourage her to message friends, to comment, to, you know, talk to people in person about it. But again, it's totally up to her. She's the one that's got something on the line, not me. You know, like the only thing, no, I'm still going to be able to have a network there that I'm going to be able to reach out to and connect with, even if they don't buy anything. 
she's the one that's got something on the line to lose. She's got free makeup to lose. So however she wants to do this, and I feel like that has helped me in getting hostesses too, because I don't really, um, you know, it's, it's, it's in their court. They decide how much they want to be involved. All right. Any other questions? I hope this has been helpful. Um, I hope it's made you think a little bit differently about who you ask when you want to give product away to host a party. Um, it's on YouTube, yes. It's not about convincing people. Um, and we're going to talk about this in the next training. So the next training will be part three, and it's going to be about online parties. Um, and it's not about convincing them. It's about giving them an experience that they want to have again, okay? Um, yeah, if the hostess wants to post a selfie with her mascara on, I always encourage that. All right. Uh, all of my videos are on YouTube, and you can follow me at Cara Lewis Newton on YouTube, and most every video that I do, I put up on YouTube. So, all right. So, part three, I'm looking at possibly doing that on Friday, and that's going to be um, about online parties. Now, I know you're going to want my party script. Guess what? I don't give my party script out. <laughs> okay. Um, but we're going to talk about my philosophy behind online parties, why I do groups over events, um, and why I think if you try it and you try it a certain way that the online party platform can work for you too. So have a fabulous day. Um, thank you for tuning in, Team Flourish. I love you. I'll be on the team page later today. Um, and hopefully this information has kind of helped you open your eyes to some new ways of getting some hostesses for those online parties. So again, remember the most important thing, Team Flourish, they got 200 parties in one hour by asking. By asking. That's it. That's It's that simple. I wish it was, you know, more complicated. I wish I had more to tell you, but it's that simple. Okay? All right. Have a wonderful day. I will be back on hopefully on Friday. I'll be posting. Follow me on Facebook.